Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as the body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. <coughs> you are Christ's body, and individually part of it. Especially combined with the other readings today, the 
It's a delicious cake, and it's filled in layers with fruit and cream and icing. The original words were spoken from Isaiah to those in mourning, to the Jews in exile, looking for some encouragement when everything seemed to be terrible. And in our first reading from the Old Testament, Ezra greets Jews who have returned from the exile. And things aren't going perfectly yet. There's, there's a lot of change going on and improvements and all that. And he tells them to celebrate. Rejoice. This is the day of the Lord. Celebrate. Enjoy. And then the Gospel begins with the words of Luke saying that he's investigating this story anew and he's telling you a student of the word, a lover of God, a friend of God that's what Theophilus means. You lover of God and friend of God I, Luke, have looked it over, I've investigated and I've checked it all out and what they have been telling you is true. Jesus, in these words here today, in front of Nazareth, he speaks to them, and he speaks words of consolation. He tells them his mission of consolation, and he also makes it clear that he fulfills prophecies, that he is the Messiah. He is Emmanuel, God with us. And Jesus fully accepts this call to heal the wounded, to be good news. Now what does this mean to us today? To me, and many of us at Seas over the years, we heard a song version of this many years ago. And it was beautiful, and I don't know if all of you have heard it, and I'm not sure that I really want to sing it right now. <laughs> but it's basically... To bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, he has anointed me. To give to them the oil of gladness and share a mantle of joy, he has anointed me. The Spirit of God is upon me, he has anointed me. And we always sing that. That's not just me. That's all of us recognizing that we console one another. We feel consoled by good music like this, by the words of the gospel like this. They are so strong. And as Paul says, we are one body. We have many parts. Different people doing different things, different roles as God has given us. He prepared for us. And we're not perfect. I know I'm not. And any of you who know me know I'm not. <laughs> not that many of you apparently know me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the people who know me best are right there. <laughs> but all of us called to be the body of Christ and called to the role that we're asked to perform, called by God to do something consoling to one another, to love one another. We're also called to forgive one another and to listen to the other people who are doing their job. Listen to Father Danny, whether you agree with him or not. Listen to me. Figure it out. Listen to me, see what, how it sets with you, and pray on it. I think Bishop John and Pope Francis are almost personifications of this reading. Rarely do we have a Pope or a Bishop that are so good, so good at this aspect of Christianity, of wanting to deal with people who who are brokenhearted, who need God's good news, who need expressions of our love and help. They are good at that. And we're called to listen to them. And occasionally, I'm 
on shore, we don't innately or automatically agree with Bishop John or the Pope or Father Dan or me, but we're called to listen with respect. The Bishop and the Pope, I mean, they're, they're doing their best at the roles, the difficult roles God has given them. And remember, we are all called to be parts of the body of Christ, consoling one another, loving one another. And we're each called to listen to the voice of the Lord. As another part of the, the gospel, or actually the uh, Acts of the Apostles, when they're on the road to Emmaus, and they're listening to Jesus, but they don't know it's Jesus, and then they say to themselves afterwards, we're not our hearts burning within us? Wasn't it exciting to hear Jesus? Wasn't it great? Today's passage is meant to be fulfilled when you hear it. When you feel it burning inside you, and you act upon it. The love of another. Bring glad tidings. Please stand, and together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God. Here are the prayers of the family that we have placed before you in faith. 
Please open our eyes and our hearts to see how we can help bring these petitions to fulfillment. We ask this through Christ our Lord. 